Currently, the majority of patients who are diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer uh, do not have an actionable driver mutation. If you look at the common ones that we see, uh, EGFR mutations, ALK, ROS1 translocations, BRAF mutations, if you look in a general population of lung cancer patients, you're probably talking about 20% of the patients. That means that 80% with current techniques do not have an identifiable driver mutation. So that's the more common situation that we're in, is situations where we don't have a specific target. Now for the 20% that have one of those particular driver mutations, the therapeutic approach you take is very different than the 80%. It's important to understand whether you're in the 20 or 80% of patients we still want to personalize the treatment to optimize the impact that treatment could have on the course of your disease. That's why it's important to know this uh, sort of thing. Um, and, but, but those are the numbers that, that we generally deal with. Your doctor will talk to you about different mutations and doing genetic markers on your tumor. And you'll be hopeful that something will come back. Uh, everyone is, because it seems like a rational and intelligent way then to pick therapy. There are plenty of mutations out there, but we don't necessarily have drugs that match up to them to show benefit in tumors. And so uh, don't feel you're in the minority on this. And uh, if, for instance, your tumor does not show any driver mutations or actionable markers, I'm throwing all these terminologies that uh, you'll hear out there, uh, then we do have therapies. And those therapies have improved survival and quality of life over previous therapies. So they are good therapies. Uh, it just puts you in a bucket or a classification where there's not necessarily what's called a driver mutation or a targetable uh, drug uh, that matches up to your mutation. In those situations, we go to chemotherapy. And we start looking at other factors such as how fit you are. Uh, Chemotherapy does have some side effects, and it tends to cause fatigue, and it can suppress your bone marrow and do other things like that. Uh, there isn't much nausea and vomiting like there was. I, I'll have patients who will look on YouTube or online, and they'll look at patients getting intravenous chemotherapy, and usually it's some leukemia or bone marrow transplant patient, and this is not that situation at all. Uh, I have plenty of patients who take chemotherapy and are able to work for the majority of their time and, and, and have a normal life with some days that are just tougher. You're tired and you don't want to get out of bed maybe and those are lazy Saturdays or it's about a week after you get chemotherapy. And that's okay uh, because you are sort of being active. You're just receiving drugs that are making your body uh, more tired. And so uh, that, that, that is something we would look at first is whether there's fitness. And, and, and I, along that vein, I tell patients, look, we're going to find the right drugs. We're going to give them to you. What you have to do is maintain your fitness and not lose weight. Because unexplained weight loss or unintentional weight loss is a bad thing. There's a reason why nobody can lose five pounds if you ask them in this country, because uh, unless they lose a limb or something, because it's just not going to happen. So eat, don't worry about your cholesterol, and stay active. Don't join an aerobics class, just keep doing your normal daily activities. And now we'll select a chemotherapy. A chemotherapy is comprised, a regimen is comprised of two drugs, a platinum agent and another agent. And your doctor will tell, advise you on what may be the best two drug regimen for you. In some instances, we add a third drug that is a VEGF drug. VEGF is vascular endothelial growth factor. Again, another targeted drug that has targeted properties, but we don't measure anything in the tumor necessarily to match it up. There are some specific eligibility or requirements that one has to have to take some of these drugs, but it is a third drug that we will add on in many patients uh, in this situation.